getting ready to make. So we're going for something a little bit, uh, uh, I guess, heartier, although still going to try and keep it somewhat light for being a, a braised-esque dish. Uh, so we're going to do, we had some chicken thighs that we were able to find, so we're going to do chicken cacciatore. Uh, I love braising. It's my favorite cooking method, and it's one of those to where if you can kind of recreate this if you have... Uh, a crock pot minus the, the caramelization part, or if you have an instant pot, you can do that, uh, or pressure cooker if you like, any of this kind of fun stuff. So we're going to kind of get right into it because we've got a few steps going and a couple things going at once. Uh, so welcome to everybody once again. I have, let me show you here, some chicken thighs. These are, we got four of them. These are really, really big, so we're probably going to be able to get one, one thigh per person. Um, but if you find them a little bit smaller, you can look at going for two. So yeah. where does chicken cacciatore come from? Like, what's, is it Italian? It, like, is, what is it, it? Is, it is Italian. You see it more, you know, at least in this century, it's kind of become more of an Italian American thing. Uh, but it's definitely, it takes, takes its roots from, I think, mid 15th century, 16th, something like that. Uh, it means in the style of the hunter. Uh, so, you know, even when in French cuisine, we're talking about like a, the derivative sauce, like a forestier, uh, mushrooms usually mean, uh, you know, denote the hunter, tomatoes of some form. Uh, so we have some of those in, in both. So, uh, yeah, you know, make sure I get my pepper on here as well. I thought veggies would be more of the gatherer and less the hunter. Well, <laughs> you know, I didn't name the stuff, so I don't know, in the, in the style of the guy hunting meat for his life. Uh, so we've got these thighs. The most important thing when you're doing any kind of sear is to have them patted dry. And that your pan is hot enough to where you hear that sizzle, uh, but don't see a big waft of smoke. If you don't hear the sizzle, heat your pan up, take everything out of it, and wait for it to come back. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. And you, uh, um, you spice these ahead of time, which is salt and pepper? Not, uh, not ahead of time, like right in front of us. Oh, just sorry. sorry. <laughs> Sorry, I'm catching up. Hi, well, 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 welcome to the video. <laughs> <laughs> I was too busy saying that Tom Flowers is watching. Hey, and, Tom. And uh, Dean Dupuy is back. Hey, Dean. And Emily Reed. Hey, everybody. Uh, so, most important thing is uh, for those of you who come to watch this later who aren't in the trade, know that one of the biggest crocks of shit that you'll ever hear when somebody talks about searing is that it seals in juices. It does the exact opposite. What we're looking to do is we're looking to get caramelization. We're looking to get a crust because golden brown and delicious is flavor. Uh, so I'm going to leave that in there and not move it. Uh, we're doing the best we can with the size of the pot, but trying to leave as much space in between. And uh, and letting the little burner that could <laughs> do, do all that it can. This is probably a good time to stir what I have working in the back. You know, Take a look at some of these ingredients. Yeah, when we're working with... Uh, be important yeah well, so when we're working with braised dishes uh, something kind of important to, to think about is what it's going to be served on and get it to where you can time it to where it's going to be kind of close to ready uh, about the same time so uh, you could serve this over any type of pasta that you like you could serve this over rice you could serve this over crusty bread uh, I personally love this over polenta which is a great pantry item to have on hand even uh, some of you may not, you may have the next closest thing and you don't even realize it is cornmeal. Uh, you know, that can kind of become a, a makeshift polenta very quickly. Uh, you could use grits if you wanted to. I mean, really the only difference is the size of the grind of the grist uh, that's coming out of there. We've made a little bit extra uh, because I've got a, I'm, I'm thinking ahead for the week for once, trying to not fly by the seat of my pants. Uh, and so knowing that if I make enough and I've got a baking dish lined with some parchment paper and spray it down, uh, then I can pour some of this into there once it's ready and we're going to make baked polenta later on in the week. Kind of like how we reuse the rice from rice and beans. Exactly, exactly. So, you know, for some of you guys, this is, uh, you know, as it is for me at least, the, the cooking is the highlight uh, of what I'm doing for the day or for the week. Uh, some of you guys have turned had to turn into kindergarten teachers real quick, uh, so you, you may not have that luxury to do that. So being able to plan out and think ahead and use the same component in multiple dishes, maybe in a little bit of a different form, uh, would, would work out better. Uh, so that's... Do we, any, uh, do we have any questions while we're um, 
standing here. If not, that's all right. I'll just keep standing. We got uh, Megan Schaff is in the house, and Lee Mayer, uh, or Lee from DC, <laughs> sorry, hey, and Lisa Charlton from Mayretta. All right. Oh, and Don Gardner, Ecuador is in the house. Ecuador is in the house, and they're quarantined, so they are in the house. Stay in the house, <laughs> please. Stay in the house. Uh, so good to. Good to see them. Uh, Kenan, said, Kurt, Kenan Curtis says she has tried the fried rice multiple times. What's that? She has tried fried rice. Oh, good. Good. That's awesome. I know uh, Lisa was doing your soup, too. Yeah, that's it's, it's really cool to, to see you guys actually doing this at home. I mean, we're, like I said, I'm just kind of goofing around making this for us, but, you know, in, the, uh, in any kind of time that we have. Okay, so the full thought was she has tried multiple times to make fried rice ah. and in the past, but used your tips and made some last night, and it was excellent. Woo! Winning! All right. Thank you. We appreciate that. I love fried rice. Oh, such a comfort food. Yeah, that, that didn't last very long. No, either. it was gone. Uh, yeah, I think maybe if we uh, if we have some down the road, we could kind of show it's, it's a little bit more labor-intensive, but could... You know, I know that I also kind of find comfort foods in, in things like beef and broccoli or sesame chicken yes. uh, or things like that. So to kind of be able to, to make our own uh, with that is, is super fun. Awesome. John Barkell's here. Hey, John. And uh, your dad says hello. Looking forward to today's recipe. There's Jeffrey's back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, it was, uh, you know... Uh, I hope you guys out there are, are making it as far as being able to navigate the world that that uh, is growing ever so dangerous. I know that we're we're even restricting the amount of trips. I was down to once a week. I was going to try and hit it every two weeks, and you know, seeing all the the people who were not wearing masks properly or yeah. uh, had their grubby little kids touching things in the store. It's like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm not. Uh, Instacart from now on. No, I think I'm going to make an intrepid venture out tomorrow to try and get paper towels for once. That is uh, the one thing. Very, very early in the morning, but aside from that, uh, yeah, not, yeah. not, not going to happen too much. So <laughs> today's shirt is brought to you by the Bitter Southerner. We are now members, uh, subscribers to the Bitter Southerner. They had a recent uh, membership drive, so, yeah. uh, so I had to pick up an extra shirt for Jeffrey since he's getting all these great comments. <laughs> yeah, it's... Uh, it's a, it's a luxury to be able to have all these nice shirts so thank you uh, for, for always outfitting me well and I will put the link again we do have our awesome which I will be wearing uh, tomorrow our awesome quarantine cafe at Inked Apparel uh, please give them some love and buy some shirts we don't get anything out of it nope. I just think it's cool that we have uh, a shirt that reflects what we're doing online for purchase for everybody that's right So uh, we're going to kind of fudge a little bit here uh, this is turning it too early, but I also don't want, uh, this is one of those do as I say, not as I do, because otherwise it's just going to be standing here waiting for this burner to go. What you're going to be looking for, see like the, how crispy and brown the edges of that is? That's what we're going to look for for all of the rest uh, of the chicken. We're going to pull them out of the pan so we can build the rest of our sauce. So just the one side? Yeah, this just is what, I'm, looking to, I'm looking to get the skin somewhat crispy, and for the most part it's got the crispiness on it. It doesn't have that golden, the, the Maillard reaction that I'm really craving, but uh, we're kind of working with the Walmart special here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, we could do this on the stove and, and really get some, some oomph behind it. You could also, if you wanted to encourage it along, you could even flour uh, your chicken as well. Just lightly flour it, dust it. Uh, make sure you season it first. I always, if I'm flouring my meats, I always season the meat first, then dredge it and season flour, and then cook it from there. All right. So some onions in. You want onions in? That's right. And we got Krista Green and Krista Miller. Krista double, party double, once again. Double Krista party. Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you all for joining us. Happy Monday. What's everybody making out there for, for dinner for themselves? So, uh, Lisa, I just mentioned your soup. Yeah. Um, and she's making some kava toppy to go with it. Nice. Nice. It also makes really good mac and cheese, too, because it's got all the, the, right, the right spirals. It hangs onto the sauce pretty well. So, a uh, good call with that. Uh, I've got some... Any type of bell pepper you have uh, is good to go in here. Um, you'll see a million different recipes or versions of this out there. So... Uh, some other type of vegetable. I think red bell pepper is probably the most traditional if you have a different color. If you wanted to use carrots, 
Uh, any other vegetable, just kind of make it your own. Because I know you're not a huge fan of bell peppers, but the red ones are good for this? No, I'm not a fan of green bell peppers. Green bell peppers, Green bell right. peppers are just ass nasty. <laughs> like I said, the, the, the phrase I'm going to go with is un, uh, like un, wasted potential or something like right. that, whatever it's said yeah. the, the previous go around. Wasted potential, but That's lots right. of mushrooms. Yes. Love mushrooms. Get in there. You struggle, only make it hotter. Uh, Krista Miller's doing a creamy white bean stew with an herby oil on top. Lots oh. of crusty bread to sop it up. Delicious meatless Monday. Yum, 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 yum. That sounds awesome. And if you wanted to add heat to this, if you wanted to add crushed red pepper, I feel like uh, I've done that enough for a lot of things. Just depends on whatever direction you want to take it. Uh, I'm just looking to get a little bit of uh, translucence on the onion. Very cool. We've got Patricia Tinsley and Brad Gunnels are, in the, are watching today. All right. Thanks, y'all. A little special evening edition of the Quarantine Cafe. That's right. Yeah, this is, uh, this is one of those that's, you know, it, it doesn't have to cook for a very long time, but it's one of those that, uh, I know Wendy's a little more particular than I am on what, what uh, constitutes proper food for each meal. And mm -hmm. God, God help me if I make something that's too heavy for lunch oh. or if I attempt to make a sandwich at dinner time. Yeah. Also eggs. Brunch is important. Eggs, eggs, eggs. Eggs, eggs, eggs. That's right. We've done surprisingly little uh, breakfast fare. Yeah. Given, I mean, normally if like if we're if we're snowed in or something for you know one of those where oh yeah we can't get on the roads for two or three days I think we eat what like six consecutive meals of breakfast. Yeah, I love it. Uh, but we we barely did the frittata a couple of weeks ago and yeah. the, finished uh, off the brioche last yesterday. Yes. Tell me what you made with the brioche. Ah, so I was I was craving brunch and I like that kind of sweet salty uh, combo. So we had some uh, some ham and cheese. Uh, sandwiched it between the bread, made a little grilled cheese sandwiches essentially, put a fried egg or sunny side up egg over the top of it, and then maple syrup. Yum. It was very good. All the goodness. We'll have to make some more bread. Uh, actually, we should make focaccia. I've yeah, got, I've been, I've hearing a lot of people really successfully making focaccia bread. That's a very easy one to make. Yeah. Um, doesn't require a ton of time, just a few small steps. Uh, you know, Chicken. Let's look at the wine again. Why this wine? So, all right. So, so, <laughs> I want to know more about the wine. All right. So process of elimination. Here's the idea. So you could do a, uh, you could do red wine or you could do white wine. I actually prefer white wine in this. However, we didn't have any wine that I wanted to sacrifice for the cause of a braise. Uh, uh, so it's, it's the, the first world problems of being part of a wine club. I'm looking through the whites that we had like, yeah, no, that's uh, no, that's good. That's better for drinking. That's better for drinking too. So nothing that I usually like to keep a bottle of something that's not crap, but something that at least uh, I could cook with, and it would be it would be an acceptable wine to to drink, but better for cooking. Uh, those that you're really excited about drinking, you probably don't want to pour those in in whatever you're cooking. Uh, so this was the one that we had open. I was making New York sours over the weekend. Uh, so that's that's the one that we're going to go with. I was going to say, so we shouldn't be using that soft blanc that we got from Three Parks like uh, we used last week? I thought about it. That was really good. <laughs> I would <laughs> even, even waste, uh, a waste isn't a term, but uh, use it for that. So when the veg uh, vegetables have just a little bit of time left to soft, that's what I'm going in with the garlic. I sliced it because that's usually how I like to do things, but if you wanted to mince it, that's fine too. Krista Green is making chicken and broccoli rotini tonight. All right. Um. So yeah, so just kind of going back and forth, making sure my polenta isn't sticking to the bottom of my pot. Calamata, chicken stock. I'm reading ahead. I'm looking, uh. at, I'm looking at the ingredients. I'm reading ahead. That's all right. So, so, I, so I, what inspired you to make this tonight? 
Uh, you know, I think I wanted to do some kind of a braise and or you know a stew type dish. We've had a lot of stews themselves, so something where we could serve the the chicken as it's whole cut and not pulled and broken down and things like that. Uh, so that was on there, um, and a lot of it was it's just a, it's a pantry forward dish. Uh, so I mean the three things that we would have had to have bought had to buy that weren't in our pantry already uh, were the chicken, a bell pepper, and the mushrooms. That's really it. We keep onions, we keep garlic, uh, as we'll get to, this will be more of a finishing pun, but we keep olives, we keep canned tomatoes in different forms, wine stock, all that good stuff. So uh, this became a pretty easy easy one to go with. So now that our garlic is very fragrant. Mm, I love garlic. Wendy will confirm. It smells good. <laughs> so uh, that's what I'm going to go in with the wine. And what kind of wine is that? I know it's not a, it's not a white, but no, what, what type is, of varietal is, is, is it? Is a, this is a Priorat from Spain, but you could use really anything you want. Like I said, if it's, if it's white, if it's red, um, you know, dry is usually better for cooking. And so this is, again, where I, I lament the the ten dollar Walmart special and it's becoming a recurring complaint but you want to kind of cook this down a little bit before you add the rest of your stuff into it because we don't want that raw wine even though it's very good wine uh, you want that that kind of those heady developed flavors you don't want to feel like we're just taking kind of it'll taste a little bit too acidic uh, at that point. Cool. Hello to Tara Murphy hey, Tara. and your Aunt Carla. Hey how are y'all? Thanks for joining us. Natchez in the house. That's right. You want a one way? Hey, so how's it going? Uh, so yeah, so we're going to let this kind of probably reduce by about half uh, till it's all you want. We want a little bit of that still kind of left in there. Um, we have a question. Yes. Uh, Chris Miller made rabbit last night, and awesome. this looks like it would be a great way to cook the next time. Any tips on doing that? So cooking rabbit. Cooking rabbit. So uh, the, uh, one of my favorites to, to cook and eat. Um, it's pretty delicate, but it also can become uh, tough. There's not a lot of fat on it, so just make sure that it doesn't cook at too high a temperature. Uh, if you're using, if you're keeping it whole, like you're doing hind quarters or uh, what? First of all, if, if you can get me in real time, what's the? How is it broken down? Very good. We will find out. Would be would be helpful. Of course, right around Easter, time to eat your rabbit. Right? <laughs> I, I always said that one of these days when I, when I had a restaurant that I was going to do uh, like a rabbit hash and we were going to poach eggs and then hide them in the hash so you'd actually have to do an Easter egg hunt and then it would just be terrible. Be like, oh, you just ate the Easter bunny. I bet she got that rabbit from uh, White Oak or um, she's got all these great services. We've, we're actually getting our first Misfit Market package this week, so I'll be curious to see what we get. Yeah, so... Um, so kind of going back to it, yeah, braising is a great cut to do for uh, for rabbit, especially the the more working parts of the animal. I might take the loin out and save that for something else. But our wine is starting to concentrate. Oh, she has shoulder last night and braised it with onions and Belgian beer. Uh, no, that sounds like that wouldn't suck. <laughs> what other ways would you braise it? Uh, let's see. I mean, I kind of go with just the traditional method that I like. You know the season it, sear it, uh, take it out once it's been seared, mirepoix, uh, any kind of herbs that you want to do, uh, and depending on if you wanted a, a lighter sauce or not, you could go with tomato product or not, uh, wine and some kind of stock, and then let that braise until the rabbit's tender. Uh, that's always a good one to do. Um. You know, if you, uh, you know, rab rabbit takes to a lot of flavors pretty well, so depending on whatever, whatever else you wanted to add to that. Um, I mean, or even as a finishing, I mean, uh, mustard is a really good flavor with rabbit. Uh, mushrooms go very well. Uh, Again, going back to that hunters. Yeah. Yeah, we, uh, you know, even, even a preparation, you know, if you want to braise it and pull it and then kind of treat it like stroganoff uh, a little bit would be a good one to, you know, that kind of covers those elements with like a Dijon sour cream based sauce okay, well. uh, with the mushrooms and whatnot. And pasta. So now our, our wine is starting to reduce. We've got ready to add the next the next few components. Yeah, we're not going all the way down to. So there's a, a great term that leads into a joke uh, called au sec, which is almost dry. And then there's always the the idea of if you're, if you're reducing something and you're working at a restaurant, you go do something else and it's over reduced. And they say, what's the next step after au sec? Oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> little restaurant humor for That's you. That's right. 
All right, so now our, our wine's concentrated. So I'm gonna do kind of about, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring, uh, which one do I wanna do first? I'm gonna do the tomatoes first. So this is a leftover from one of our dishes that we did earlier in the week. These are just canned diced tomatoes. I wanna go about 50-50 here. This is a tomato-based braise. So half diced, half crushed. Uh, if you had the 14 and a half ounce cans of each, that would work really, really well. So why do you do half and half? Why not just one or the other? Uh, because I want a little bit more of the, the texture in there of the diced, but then we also need something to kind of give it its sauciness. Uh, so that's why the crushed. I don't need tomato to be saucy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so, I'm going to go with our chicken, kind of nestle it down back in there. And this is going to help me judge how much liquid additional I'm going to need to add. So based on this, how much? A little bit? Or just, just, a, just a little bit. I, you know, I'm not looking to fully submerge. So about that much. That was probably about a cup somewhere in there. Uh, so the, the few ingredients, so what we're going to do is I've got my oven preheated to 375. I would never braise a working cut of beef that uh, at that high a temperature. I'd want to do something, you know, 250 maybe as high as 275, something like that. But with chicken, uh, it's gonna cook faster, so I'm not as worried about that. And we're cooking it on the bone, so I'm not worried about it drying out. Uh, but what I do wanna do is, as it's coming back up, I want it to hit a simmer, and then I'm gonna cover it with the lid. And then once, uh, once that takes place, it's gonna go in the oven for about 45 minutes. And then once it comes out, I'm gonna add some olives. I don't wanna cook with them, because I don't want them to, get a, you know, to be too, too salty in the dish and then some fresh parsley. You're using that Italian parsley again. Uh, yeah, I mean, and if there was another herb that you had that you liked, if you wanted to use basil, if you wanted to use uh, marjoram, oregano, any of that would be good. We got Beth per uh, Kirkhope in the house. Hey, Beth. And uh, Mary Britton. All right, all kinds of fun. That's right. So I'm gonna kind of get my polenta ready for that, this is for the baked polenta for tomorrow or uh, later in the week. We have big plans tomorrow. Oh no, we hint, got zero hint. plans tomorrow. Hint, hint. We're not going nowhere. Foreshadowing for fun stuff coming up for tomorrow. So that, uh, that kind of covers our polenta to be baked for right now. I've got some butter that I'm gonna add in to make this nice and rich. So why did you put the butter in after you already put some in there? So the butter is going to make things soft. Uh, and so we want, as we're eating this for tonight, uh, for the, you know, to kind of help sop up some of the braising liquid, I want a good creamy, soft polenta. For tomorrow, or for whenever we get to this, for baked polenta, I want it to set up a little bit more stiff uh, and firm. So we, you know, we can griddle it, we can bake it, and it's not going to dissolve or kind of turn to mush on us. Nobody likes that. No, and you know, if you wanted to, if you wanted to further enrich this, you know, we got, uh, I've got some Parmesan cheese. If you wanted to make this Parmesan polenta, you could go that direction. If you wanted to kind of prepare for your baking and you wanted to even line the top with Parmesan. Yum. No such thing as gilding the lily around here. That's right. Except for the cheese wouldn't be very a big fan of Greg Haygood's. <laughs> no, no. So uh, for those of you who are a little more cheese sensitive, feel free to admit that. Uh, but that's really it for right now. We're just going to wait for our chicken to come up to a simmer. We'll post the recipe. We'll post pictures. Thank you all so much for watching. We, uh, we appreciate it, and we will see you guys tomorrow. Uh, until then, uh, stay safe. Stay indoors. Stay off the belt line. Wash your hands. See you guys.